Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside with us today. It is, yes, it's after 9 o'clock at night and I need to film, but someone follows me <laughs> when she can't find her mother to chase. So, um, what do we got here? This, uh, this cat-like object and, and us are going to make a video. You cool with that? Yes. Alright, so let's get started. Yeah, like, you should be able to stay focused on my eyeball. <laughs> I know it's pretty silly so in all seriousness I do actually have a video to make as you know if you follow the channel for any length of time I like to shoot many different styles of arrows out of one particular bow be it go and take a 3d arrow then build a hunting arrow then build an indoor arrow and be able to tune my bow in order to have those arrows fly really well get really good groupings and have a really forgiving setup the issue is is that there are lots of different ways to get that and gain that depending on the type of bow that you have so I really want to quickly talk about the different ways ways or the different steps that I would take in order to troubleshoot different tuning methods or to just basically jump ahead of any of the speed bumps I know that I would have if I tried a different tuning method first. So ideally you start with center shot at 13 16 from the riser. I've never seen a manufacturer recommend anything else. You start with 13 16 that's measuring from the burger button placement which is the other side of where your rest bolts in burger button to the center of the arrow as it sits in the rest when it's knocked onto the string. 13 16 is a great starting point and you get an eighth of an inch of play either way. Predominantly everybody's going to push it out and away from the riser which for most right hand archers of course is going to be to the left. Lefties you got to flip it the other way and go right. But either way, you get an eighth inch of legal play before you start kind of going out of spec. And actually, eighth of an inch is a pretty good common uh, spec to use for tolerance for ATA length and brace height as well. Every manufacturer is going to give you about an eighth of an inch of... Uh, of that spec that uh, can be legal play. So eighth of an inch from 13 16 that means you got 15 16 or down to 11 16 Once you start moving out of that center shot position, you know that you're probably going to have to do another tuning method to help you get to a perfect bullet hole through paper or whatever type of tuning method that you're doing. The next thing, if your bow has it, is yoke tuning. And that is, of course, if your bow has a bus cable, which of course would have limbs that are connected to a cable that is connected to a cam both top and bottom. Now yoke tuning is something that has been around for a very long time because a lot of bows have yokes. For example, I'm doing a little bit of work for a local father and son combo and here we have a diamonds razor edge and you'll notice it has a yoke both top and on the bottom which means you can induce or remove cam lean by twisting and untwisting the yokes. The uh, Bowtex for many many years that ran the dual cam system often worked out of yoke tuning. You had to yoke tune those Bowtex systems. Now they've gone with a three track binary and the deadlock cam shift but if your bow has yokes and particularly both top and bottom you're going to have have to use yoke tuning in order to get perfect air flight, I can almost guarantee it. Now here we have a Matthews DXT. This bow is from 2009, but it's still killing white tails like it was born just yesterday. And it also has a yoke being a single cam with the either wheel up top and the one cam at the bottom. It does have a yoke that you can use to torque the either wheel to get that string track following the way you want in order to get a perfect bullet hole if necessary. Now, unlike a dual cam system that has a yoke both top and bottom, single cam systems and a hybrid cam system that only has one yoke at the top Quite often you won't necessarily need to yoke tune if you can play within that legal 1 8 inch of rest movement, but sometimes just adding a twist or a twist and a half or two into one side of the cable will not induce any cabling that's outlandish and you can get a really really nice tune out of a bow that has just a one yoke system at the top like a single cam or the hybrid cam which Hoyt and PSE was known for for decades. So if you exhausted that 1 8 inch of legal play you've exhausted the yoke tuning if your bow has that option. If you have a binary cam system where it's static we'll get to you later but if you've exhausted both those options and you're still getting a tear you can't rectify now I've come to the point where I would say Say, you are the problem. <laughs> So if you are the problem, that's okay because you've done one of two things. One, you either need to work on your grip or your face pressure, and that is a form thing, and that is super simple because that is free for you to work on, and you can blind bail at five feet, or you could try shooting groups of 50 yards and trying all different kinds of face pressure and seeing if your groups open it up and close. And then once you find that nice tight group with the face pressure and the grip that you like, then you can shoot through paper and see if that is rectifiable, again, with that one inch of play or with the yokes. 
but then there's also the possibility that you've built an arrow outside of the bell curve which if you think of a statistical bell curve you've either built an arrow that's really light like a 3d arrow that has a low uh, foc number which can be fickle to tune or on the other end of the spectrum you have built something that's really heavy you know 600 650 and up and you have a really high foc both of those require a lot of work with your dynamic spine meaning how stiff the arrow or how soft the arrow is when it's actually shot out of the bow and the more dynamic spine that it causes on the light end or the uh, more flexed it gets or the more forced it gets on the heavy end it's really really particular with your form so really kind of both revolves around your form but building an arrow outside of the bell curve definitely doesn't help so if the rest doesn't work and the yokes don't work and you think one of those two might be the problem I strongly recommend you working on your form again doing what I recommended trying different face pressure and grip pressures at 20 30 40 50 yards and seeing if groups get bigger and smaller and then if you find one that has a really nice tight group based on your face pressure and your gripping and shooting that way for a week or so that would be the way I would then try to tune through paper and most often than not if those uh, uh, shafts are flying really well and they're grouping together really well it means they're gonna fly really well out of the bow almost immediately which means they'll be really easy to tune with a little bit of rest movement and with a little bit of yoke tuning if necessary now if you find if it's a light arrow or a heavy arrow problem now you're gonna have to try a normal arrow pick one from the bell curve so if you are supposed to shoot you know 400 spine with 100 125 grains up front based on your draw length and poundage find an arrow and shoot it and see if you can get that arrow to tune if you're a big guy like me shoot a 31 inch draw 60 pounds find a 300 spine 125 grain point for me that's about a 480 grain arrow shoot that through paper and if you can get that to tune with your uh, grip being okay your eighth of rest movement and your yoke movement if you can get that to tune okay then you know you have a heavy or light arrow problem which in the 3d or in the hunting woods is not uncommon these days rest movement yoke tuning form check and the heavy and light arrow problems or as I like to call them billing outside the bell curve and then finally the sixth thing is shimming now for certain bows and for certain manufacturers like Matthew shimming is actually super simple you just have to put the bow in the press and it's a couple of screws and you can pull the whole axle system out there's no silly e-clips to mess with and all that sort of stuff but for some bows it's a lot more difficult they have many different shims on both sides some are really easy they just have big uh, fat plastic spacers like uh, diamond and Bowtech were famous for for years uh, elite was also known for using semi okay the new Hoyts are really nice with the Ventum 33 and the Ventum 30 and the RX 5 and the RX 5 Ultra they also have really nice shim systems but shimming is the very last thing that I like to try because there's a lot of different variables that happen with the first five things and if you're finding that you can't get a tune to happen and you've tried the shimming and you've tried everything else I don't know go throw your bow off a cliff I don't I, I have no idea I will say that kind of an asterisk or a little addendum footnote at the end, the last thing that there is kind of a last ditch effort for those of you that are experiencing a knock low tear, and that is tiller tuning, which is something I haven't said since like 2005. Tiller tuning is incredibly straightforward and was very useful on older technology of bows when we had a wider range of tolerances within limbs and risers and all this sort of stuff. And of course, you trad archers are very familiar with tiller tuning when it comes to making your your own bows however for those of us that shoot in the compound world and particularly from like 2015 onward we haven't had to worry about it or think about it but tuning the tiller of the bow in particular there seems to be really recently a scourge of knock low tears and particularly from one generalized company that sells a lot of bows i don't know what it is recently but the v3 for some reason has been brutal on knock low tears people are sending me pictures of arrows that are pointing clear down on the rest their knocking height is great they've even moved it up i don't know what it it is but for some reason tiller tuning has been working really well and all tiller tuning involves is taking poundage out of the limb that is overpowering the other so if you're getting a knock low tear that you can just envision that that lower limb is overpowering the top limb so if you crank all the limbs down and if you need to wind them out let's say you have a 70 pound bow but you want to shoot it at 65 pounds crank them all the way down wind them out evenly until you get to 65 pound peak weight shoot through paper see if that low tear is happening and then a quarter turn at a time take out 
poundage and take out weight of the bottom limb. Often you don't need more than a quarter to a half a turn. When you shoot it, it will often start to come up and rectify because you're tiller tuning, you're taking out force out of that bottom limb set. When you take out that force of the bottom limb set, the arrow will start to level out for you and you'll get a better tear through paper. Now, ironically, this doesn't, at least recently that I've been testing, seem to affect the timing of the bow at all, which is not the case with older compounds. As soon as you started tiller, to, uh, tiller timing and everything, or tiller tuning, it would start messing with the timing of the bow. But I don't know if it's because the limbs of a lot of today's bows are so past parallel. I have no idea what it is, but I can tell you that just that quarter turn has been rectifying a lot of people's issues, and particularly if you're shooting the new V327 or V331. But really, anybody who's getting a knock load tear that you can't get rid of and your cams are already in sync and everything's already in check... Yeah, sure. Go ahead and try tiller tuning. I don't see why not. But anyway, that's all for this video. If you have any questions on any of the methods or the order that I do them in or anything else that pertains to the sport of archery and archery hunting, follow the links in the description below. Hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, send me an email, or even drop a comment with your experience and your tuning methods and the steps you take to get a perfect bullet hole down below. Hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery, archery hunting if you so choose. Definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation, and we'll get to see you next time.